Welcome to it's fightingstupid.blogspot.com. It's RT here with your UFC 140 predictions. We're going to start at the bottom of the card where we got Mitch Danger Zone Clark taking on John Cholish. Mitch Clark's Canadian fighter, sporting, sporting a 9 0 record, trains out of the Hayabusa Fight Center in Edmonton, Alberta. He's a good grappler, he's got pretty good leg kicks, solid boxing. In John Cholish, he's taking on a Henzo Gracie fighter who trains his jiu-jitsu with uh, the aforementioned Henzo Gracie as well as John Dandahar and he works on his Muay Thai with crew Phil Nurse. Uh, he wrestled Division I at Cornell University and is the first Ivy Leaguer to ever participate in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Full disclosure, Mitch Clark's a good friend of the blog and uh, we're going to be taking him here for a number of reasons. Uh, the first is he's got an unparalleled work ethic, the second being that is he's beastly strong and thirdly I think stylistically he's going to be able to put Cholish in some positions where his uh, traditional wrestling background isn't going to be as effective particularly in the clinch and against the fence I think Mitch Clark's going to find success um, working him over with dirty boxing and eventually with ground and pound from the top I like Mitch Clark by decision here moving up the card we've got Rich Antonito taking on Jack, Jake Hetch um, I think uh, Antonito's wrestling here, or rather anti-wrestling, is going to be too much. Um, Jake relies a lot on his takedown and his top control, and I don't think he's going to be able to get it. I think the sprawling brawl is going to be there for Rich. I think he's going to get a TKO late in the second. The third fight on the card is Yves Jablin taking on YL Watson. Um, there's a couple of interesting dynamics to this fight. Um, Yves Jablin is one of the most exciting fighters in the sport. Uh, as long as his gas tank holds out, which usually is only a round and a half to two rounds. The other uh, interesting dynamic here is that YL is a very, very tall and lengthy fighter who uh, has a very good jiu-jitsu game. So the question is, what's going to give first? Is Eves going to be able to get at him with that striking, or is he eventually going to fade, allowing YL to find the choke? I think YL is going to be able to use his range long enough to survive and eventually sink in one of those chokes, look for submission victory probably late in the second. Moving up the card, we've got John the Bull McDessie taking on Dennis Superman Hallman. Uh, Dennis Superman Hallman's famous for a number of reasons. Uh, he's 2 0 against Matt Hughes. He uh, sported that banana, banana hammock last time out at the uh, uh, Ortiz versus uh, Day Evans card. And, uh, you know, he's, he's been around forever. Um, in John McDessie, he's taking on a very, very exciting stand up fighter from Canada who uh, sports a lot of spinning strikes, who's very unique and uh, unorthodox with how he likes to use them. Um, Dennis Holman looked like hell at the weigh-ins, and I think that could prove to be uh, the difference here. Uh, early in the fight, um, a lot of the questions about McDessie are going to be answered. How is his takedown defense? How is his submission defense? Uh, is Holman's uh, weight cut going to be uh, as big a factor as it looks like it will be? That's going to be tough to say. I think that if McDessie can utilize his footwork, stay on his bicycle, stay off his back for the first half of the fight, I think he's going to find success later on and be able to put Hallman away. The question is, can he last long enough to implement that striking game? I think he's going to be able to. I like John McDessie here. Later on the card, we've got Christoph Szczynski taking on Igor Prokryets. Uh, Christoph szczynski has been training a lot down at the Rain Training Center with Mark Muniz, Vandele Silva, Jake Ellenberger. Uh, Mayhem Miller, Fabricio Verdum. He's looking in tip-top shape and very good. Igor Prokryets is a similar fighter to Krzysztof Szczynski, but not quite as good. They are both sort of serve that gatekeeper role in the 205-pound division, but I think Szczynski is just a little bit better everywhere. He's better striking, he's a little bit better wrestling, and on the ground, I think Szczynski has a sizable advantage. I like Szczynski to utilize clinch work and cage work uh, to bust up Prokryets against the fence before eventually getting him down where he will win by his patented Kimura. Moving up the card, we've got Mark the Machine Hominick taking on the Korean zombie Chan Jung Zung. Um, rather Chan Sung Jung. <laughs> uh, I think uh, that this fight is absolutely perfect for Mark the Machine Hominick. Uh, when Mark's at his best, he's picking apart brawlers. Uh, the Korean Zombie can't seem to resist getting in a brawl, and I think that as this fight goes on, Mark Hominick's going to utilize crisp combinations and that patented liver punch to really wear the zombie out en route to a three-round decision. In the third fight from the top, we've got Antonio Rid Rogerio Noguera taking on the Huntington Beach bad boy Tito Ortiz. This, uh, this fight is very interesting for a number of reasons. Um, in his UFC career, uh, Little Nog has seemed to have had trouble with wrestlers. Uh, Tito Ortiz, when he's at his best, 
implements a strong wrestling game with uh, unparalleled ground and pound. The real question mark here is Tito Ortiz's back. Uh, is his back, is his neck in the kind of condition where he's going to be able to use that explosive takedown? I'm going to bet that it's not. The other factor is Rogerio Nogueira has been working extensively on his defensive wrestling and there's no better illustration of that than his fight against Phil Davis. Phil Davis is big, he's explosive, and he's one of the most decorated wrestlers in the 205 pound division and Rogerio showed a lot of good counter wrestling in that fight even though he did come up short. I like Antonio Rogerio Nogueira to keep this fight on his feet, uh, utilize his good boxing and to uh, rough Tito Ortiz up en route to a decision. In the co-main event of the evening, we have Rogerio's brother, Antonio Minotaro Noguera, taking on Frank Mir. This is a rematch from about three years ago where uh, Frank Mir uh, did the uh, impossible and KO'd Big Nog. Um, since that fight, a lot of things have come to light, including a, uh, a staff inspection which hospitalized Big Nog going into that fight. That said, let's just throw that fight in the dumpster and look at this analytically. I think that Minotaro's body is starting to break down on him. But every time you count Big Nog out, it seems that he comes back with a vengeance. Whether it be that fight against Tim Sylvia, whether it be the fight against uh, Schaub, he finds a way to win when you don't think he can. Frank Mir uh, is probably at this point in his career the better athlete, probably the more well-rounded fighter, probably has a little bit more length left on his career. That said, I cannot bring myself to pick against Minotaro. I like Big Nog by Anaconda Choke, hopefully early in the second. Moving up to the main event of the evening, we have John Bones Jones taking on Lyoto the Dragon Machida. This is a really interesting fight for uh, a number of reasons. Most importantly, the, the style clash that these two present. John Jones is a very unorthodox, wild, fluid fighter, whereas Lyoto Machida is a very traditional karate fighter. He utilizes a, a, a stance that's unique to that style of fighting. He gets in and out and is a very efficient striker. Um, John Jones also can use that in and out offense just because of his physicality. He's a very long, lean, and rangy fighter. That said, I don't think that's where this fight happens. I think John Jones is going to look to get inside, use those wrestling credentials, use the collar and elbow, use the clinch, rough him up in there and try and get a, uh, some sort of clinch takedown. From there, I think he's going to utilize that ground and pound. He's got a very good ground game and he's just relentless once he gets on top. So I think if he can get into that sort of fight, get into that sort of position, I think he's going to win. That said, this fight's going to be very interesting and very explosive, and uh, I can't wait to see it. This has been your UFC 140 Predictions with RT from its fightingstupid.blogspot.com. Enjoy the fights.